How do you tell the difference between the front and the back? On the outside, there's a simple way. The apex points to the left of the person who owns it. So apex points to the left. So find where the side is longer, if it's pointing that way. So this is the anterior side of the heart. This is the front. This is the back side. Notice the apex is now pointing that way. All right. When you crack it open, nice, easy way to tell the difference. I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> the wall of the left side is always thicker. So no matter which way I'm looking at this, the wall of that left side is always going to be thicker. Notice the right side, very thin in comparison. So that's how I tell the difference. So this is the left ventricle, that's the right ventricle. Up above these chambers, this is the left atrium, this is the right atrium. All right, so let me work through from here all the parts, starting from the top. Get it going the right way. Okay, so from the front of the heart, you can see a few things. You can see the apex of the heart, the very tip. The outside, you can see these little oracles. So they're the little floppy looking things on the front. This is the left oracle. So on the same side as the short side. And the right oracle. So there's our right oracle. Um, you can see in a lot of the hearts, the pulmonary trunk, which is this big blue, and the aorta. <clears throat> Not as easy to see in this particular heart, but you can see it in other hearts. So if it's on a real heart, I'll do you a favor and put the model out with that part pointed to it. So you can see the comparison. So if you know it on the model, you can find it on the real heart. I'll have them next to each other. All right, so popping it open. We have the right ventricle, left ventricle. Right atrium, left atrium. Now the way you tell the difference between the ventricle and the atrium is this chamber, this um, valve. Everything above the valve is in the atrium. Everything below the valve is the ventricle. Above the valve, atrium, below ventricle. Um, the right side has your bicuspid valve. I'm sorry, tricuspid, because it's right to tri, so that's on your right side. So this is the tricuspid. And then this side has our bicuspid, because you gotta try it before you buy it. So tricuspid, bicuspid. They're gonna be held down by these strings. Those strings are called corda tendini. The corda tendini are attached to the ventricular wall through these weird little muscles, and I'm always very careful to pin them close to the ventricle to the uh, corda tendini so that you can see that I'm pointing at that. They are called the papillary muscles. So the corda tendini are attached to the papillary muscles. Um, other muscles you need to be concerned about. There is the epicardium, which is sort of this shiny muscle on the outside. It's tough to see um, in the real hearts. I wouldn't do that to you. But an important one here is the myocardium. It's all this really thick muscle. All of this is myocardium, as in you know, myo for muscles. So these are the really thick muscles here. At the bottom of the ventricles, you'll see this crisscrossy muscle. That crisscrossy muscle, and it looks different in some of the other ventricles. Um, here we go. At the bottom of that one, you can see they're really crisscrossy. That's the trabeculae carne. So trabeculae means crisscross. Carne is meat, so it's the crisscrossy muscle. Let's see. We've got um, from inside here, between the ventricles, we have the interventricular septum. A septum divides two chambers, so that's your interventricular septum. It's just this big thing. It's made of myocardium, but if I'm pointing to this, I'm asking for the interventricular septum. I'll ask for the myocardium out here, somewhere along that way. That's the interventricular septum. All right, so coming out of the left ventricle is the aorta. 
So this would be the opening for the aorta. And the aorta has a little semilunar valve that it looks like a fleshy valve. This is the aortic semilunar valve. So aortic semilunar valve goes to the aorta. And if you get deep inside here, I'm not going to be able to see it through this heart, you can see the pulmonary semilunar valve going to the pulmonary trunk. I'll show you on the model though. It's this little white valve, looks like a butt, lunar butt. Yeah, that's how I make that association. So here's the pulmonary semilunar valves. Um, let's see. The arteries you see running along the front of the heart, and you can see this in the cat too. All these little arteries are the coronary arteries and coronary veins. So there's a really big coronary artery right there. Uh, they could ask about the adipose. That's just all this fat, adipose. Um, I'm going to take my gloves off and do the rest of this on the model. Because we have some little veins and some little arteries. Okay. <clears throat> Pulmonary trunk. Pulmonary trunk uh, breaks into what? Pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries. So here's our pulmonary arteries. Coming back from the lungs to the heart are these pulmonary veins. The little red veins. Pulmonary veins. We have the superior vena cava. We see that in the cat. And at the bottom of this, you can see that inferior vena cava going down. Aorta, aortic arch, brachiocephalic artery. Um, that's about it.